cancer has now overtaken heart disease as the main cause of death in 12 European countries. And worldwide spending on cancer medicines will exceed $150 billion by 2020. That's according to IMS Health Holdings. Now, most of this growth are driven by innovative and very expensive new therapies that help the immune system to attack tumors called immunotherapies. I spoke to Dr. Anupam Jena, Associate Professor of Healthcare Policy at Harvard Medical School and a physician in the Department of Medicine at Massachusetts General Hospital, and I asked him what immunotherapy is. Immunotherapies are a new class of medications that work in, in two ways. The, the first thing to understand is that the way that cancer evades the system is by essentially masquerading as normal tissue in the body, and so that's why the immune cells can't activate against it. But immunotherapies work uh, by either changing the way in which cancer cells are recognized, in other words, removing their masking and allowing, allowing them to be attacked by immuno-oncology therapies. And the second way is that immune cells can actually be removed from a patient's body and targeted towards that same tumor and then retransfused back into the body to attack the cells. Which drug companies are leading in this field? So there, there are a number of companies. I think the two that come to mind are uh, BMS, Bristol-Myers Squibb, uh, and Merck, two large pharmaceutical companies in the United States. But there are a number of other companies that have also been investing in this space. Well, it can cost tens of thousands of dollars to have a course of immunotherapy. Why is it so expensive? Uh, it's expensive for a few reasons. First, the, the development of these drugs is different than the traditional uh, pharmaceutical drugs, which are small molecules. These drugs often uh, require drugs to be grown in, in animals, and that process of development is actually quite expensive. But the real reason that they're expensive is because there's a lot of uh, unrecognized uncertainty in the drug development process. If you think about how many drugs it takes to, to make one come to market successfully, that number is something like one or two out of a hundred drugs. And so pharmaceutical companies in general have to be rewarded by that uncertainty, for that uncertainty by these larger prices. Are the insurance companies, though, receptive to immunotherapy so far? Are they covering it? They have when the evidence base for the drugs is, is strong. So there are certain immuno-oncology therapies, for example, relatively recent breakthroughs in uh, metastatic melanoma. This is a skin cancer that has spread to the rest of the body. There are some drugs which have shown really tremendous results in generating long-term survival for a, for a population of patients between 10 and 20 percent of these patients now living longer than five years. And so when the evidence base is there, insurance companies, health plans have generally been uh, covering these drugs. Now, to your point of the evidence being there, we're seeing an interesting phenomenon with regards to expensive and revolutionary therapies. Some companies are offering a money-back guarantee. GlaxoSmithKline, one of them, they're offering a money-back guarantee for a very expensive gene therapy, the drug called Stromvelis. Now, granted, this isn't a cancer treatment. It's for the very rare disorder known as, as Bubble Boy syndrome, where the immune system is severely compromised. Now, it costs about... 500,000 pounds, 650,000 dollars for this treatment, and GlaxoSmithKline saying that they'll give the money back in order to encourage health insurance companies and medical professionals to use this treatment. What do you make of that move? So I think that's a terrific way forward. It's a really innovative way forward when it comes to pricing. And the basic idea is, is to treat healthcare in a sense how we treat other parts of the decisions that we make in our overall lives. It's a money back guarantee. Uh, we don't want to be in the business of paying for drugs that don't work, but we want to be in the business of rewarding manufacturers when they make drugs that really change people's lives. And I think a money back guarantee is the right step in that direction. Well, to your earlier point that research and design and analysis is so expensive that the drug companies do need to be rewarded for years and years of effort that they put in ahead of this development. But the warranty, how easy or difficult is it to prove that a, a drug was successful and what is the varying degrees of success? It's really difficult to tell. I mean, you can see a drug that's extraordinarily promising in lab and animal studies and yet fails in, in real world trials. You can then have a drug that actually looks good in real world trials, but when it's actually used in the population, fails to work. And so that, that, 
that uh, uncertainty is inherent in the process. And I think the way forward actually is to move uh, along the lines of these money back guarantees or value-based value purchases. And the basic idea is that you pay for a drug when it works and you also ensure that the drugs can be, be used to treat patients as early as possible. And you let the real world generate the evidence on whether a drug works or not.